This video was requested by a viewer and I think it's a terrific topic to broach. The reason I think this is that the structure in question is claimed by some, wrongly as usual, to be irreducibly complex, or unable to evolve step by step and remain functional in each stage. So let's jump right in. ATP synthase is an enzyme that synthesizes ATP, which is the abbreviation for adenosine triphosphate. ATP transfers cellular energy to various processes, existing in all life on Earth, which is an indication of how old it is. Also, as established in my video, Common Ancestry Part 6, all organisms contain ATP synthase, meaning that both ATP and ATP synthase were likely in the last universal common ancestor of all life. So, ATP synthase makes ATP by combining ADP, or adenosine diphosphate, with a phosphate ion. Now, in the mitochondria, hydrogen ions, which are also known as protons, are pumped out of the matrix to generate electrochemical potential, and then they flow back into the matrix, which the ATP synthase uses to add the phosphate ion to ADP and create ATP. This is only the last step of aerobic respiration, and this step is fully known as oxidative phosphorylation. The other parts of aerobic respiration include glycolysis and the citric acid cycle, but these are beyond the scope of this video. The interesting thing about ATP synthase is that it's not like your ordinary membrane enzyme. What do I mean? Well, ATP synthase rotates. Let me explain. ATP synthase is made of essentially two regions called F0 and F1. According to the European Bioinformatics Institute, Quote, F-ATPases, also known as ATP synthases, F1-F0 ATPase, or hydrogen transporting two-sector ATPase, are composed of two linked complexes. The F1 ATPase complex is the catalytic core and is composed of five subunits, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, while the F0 ATPase complex is the membrane-embedded proton channel that is composed of at least three subunits, A to C, with additional subunits in mitochondria. Both the F1 and F0 complexes are rotary motors that are coupled back to back. In the F1 complex, the central gamma subunit forms the rotor inside the cylinder made of the alpha-3, beta-3 subunits, while in the F0 complex, the ring-shaped C subunits form the rotor. The two rotors rotate in opposite directions, but the F0 rotor is usually stronger, using the force from the proton gradient to push the F1 rotor in reverse in order to drive ATP synthesis. This entry represents the alpha subunit found in the F1 complex of FATPases. In FATPase, there are three copies of the alpha and beta subunits that form the catalytic core of the F1 complex, while the remaining F1 subunits, gamma, delta, epsilon, form part of the stalks. There is a substrate binding site on each of the alpha and beta subunits, those on the beta subunits being catalytic, while those on the alpha subunits are regulatory. The alpha and beta subunits form a cylinder that is attached to the central stalk. The alpha-beta subunits undergo a sequence of conformational changes leading to the formation of ATP from ADP which are induced by the rotation of the gamma subunit, itself is driven by the movement of protons through the F0 complex C subunit." Close quote. So we see that the F-ATP synthase, which we'll just shorten to ATP synthase unless otherwise stated, is anything but simple. Also, there isn't simply one type of ATP synthase. Another type is the V-ATP synthase, which pumps hydrogen ions across cellular membranes, and yet another type is the A-ATP synthase, which functions like F-ATP synthase, but is evidently more closely related structurally to V-ATP synthase. F-ATP synthase is similar to V-ATP synthase, but V-ATP synthase uses ATP, while F-ATP creates ATP. These are essentially the same processes, but operating in reverse. V-ATP synthase uses chemical energy to turn the turbine, while F-ATP synthase has the turbine turned to produce chemical energy. 
but the rotational process isn't perfect. Occasionally, the FATP synthase turns briefly in the opposite direction. So how could the ATP synthase have evolved? Well, it would appear that the F1 and F0 subunits were independent parts that bonded together and gained new function. Even alone, both parts can perform functions. F1 can hydrolyze or break down ATP into ADP and phosphate ions, while F0 can transport protons. But where did the subunits originate? The F1 subunit is remarkably similar structurally to hexameric DNA helicases. The DNA helicase is an enzyme involved in unwinding double-stranded DNA so that replication or transcription can occur. According to the University of Illinois, quote, Both hexameric helicase and ATP synthase consist of hexameric rings but the F1 ring is composed of three, each of alternating alpha and beta subunits. However, the sequence similarity and homologous tertiary structures of these two subunits strongly suggests that both evolved from a common ancestor, indicating that the ancestral structure was a homohexameric structure." Close quote. And the F0 subunit is similar structurally to the proton motor that powers flagella in bacteria. According to the 1989 paper, gene duplication as a means for altering proton ATP ratios during the evolution of F0 F1 ATP aces and synthases, quote, Indeed, energy derived from sunlight in the oxidation of non fermentable substrates was so abundant, the capacity for pumping protons by these alternative systems may have quickly exceeded that necessary for maintaining pH and driving transport. This would have allowed the direction of proton flow through the ancestral F0 F1 to reverse, thereby converting it from an ATPase to an ATP synthase. The descendants of these photophosphorylation and oxidative phosphorylation systems are found today in chloroplasts, mitochondria, eubacteria, and archaebacteria. Close quote. So, these two subunits that originally had independent jobs could have been combined to gain new functions, generating what would have been, probably at first, a not especially efficient enzyme that catalyzed the breakdown of ATP into ADP and phosphate ions. Later, function was reversed in the enzyme, causing FATP to create ATP rather than break it down. Evidently, a second reversal of function later occurred, resulting in V-ATP synthase. These reversals have been explained by way of gene duplications. First, the ancestral anaerobic ATPase, an enzyme that would have broken down ATP into ADP and phosphate ions, would have had subunits that only broke down ATP, called catalytic subunits. However, a duplication in the gene for making those catalytic subunits occurred and mutated, causing non-catalytic subunits to form. Thus, instead of protons being pumped out of an organelle and ATP being broken down, the protons could be pumped in and ATP could be synthesized. But more recently, the 2007 paper, Inventing the Dynamo Machine, the evolution of the F-type and V-type ATP aces, has pushed even further documenting the possible intermediate steps between the hexameric helicase and the full-blown ATP synthase. The paper proposes that the helicase could have simply become bound to a protein membrane channel, forming a translocase, which is a protein that assists in moving molecules across a membrane. From there, the recruitment of two central stock subunits could have facilitated the development of an ATP-driven translocase. The rest is just the simple modification of the structure due to the genetic duplications and mutations already discussed to create the ATP synthase. This is a viable model of ATP synthase formation and shows that ATP synthase is by no means irreducibly complex. We see that by straightforward, incremental steps can a complex structure like the ATP synthase originate from so simple a beginning. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.